Okay, is that credits? Is that credits? I think it might be. It is credits. Oh boy. <laughs> what a ride. What a ride. I'm actually really surprised that we didn't get um, like an ending, not like an ending sequence, but like a, uh, like in the first game, you know, like we beat the game and then there was like this part afterwards that we had to play for about like 30 minutes or so. I'm just shocked that we didn't get another one of those. But uh, all right. Trails in the Sky SC slash second chapter. Conquered. Oh, um, my overall thoughts, uh, let's see, this is mostly going to be criticisms again, I'm sorry, uh, I believe this is technically the uh, second Trails game of them all, like all the Legend of Hero games basically, um, so this may come across as harsh due to that. Just remember, I'm now five Trails games into the franchise, so I'm seeing a pattern I don't like in some places. Um, more or less that, you know, I've, I, I, I'm picking up on things that, that I wish get fixed in other games, but they don't. And because I've already experienced them in other games, then like I have to criticize them here and you know, it just gets kind of messy. Um, but, uh, I do like the game and had fun despite, uh, what I'm about to say. I, I wouldn't finish the game if I wasn't enjoying myself. And I, I think that's a very important thing for me to clarify is I, I did enjoy the game. I, I actually like it quite a bit. Um, it just, it just, it just does things that are annoying, you know, you know, I, I wish it didn't do annoying things and it would be a great game or a great er game, I suppose. Alrighty, so, uh, for the story, was it satisfying? Hmm. I... I'm gonna say it was satisfying. I'm trying to think of anything that was left out that needed to be answered and whatnot. And I feel like we've got a pretty nice open and shut case here we had we had our enemy you know marked out and we defeated basically all of our enemies so I don't think there's really anything that I I uh, I need answers on as far as the what the scope of this game offered I mean obviously there's a lot of threads out there that I need more answers to but uh, yeah, I would I would say it was satisfying, and I will say it did feel complete. Uh, how is the pacing? <laughs> um, game does a really good job of making you be a bracer, uh, but the direction it takes is so obnoxious sometimes. If I uh, if I'm on the Ouroboros task force, I need to do nothing but that. So one of the the obnoxious things that this game does <clears throat> is it says, all right, you're in charge of finding out what Ouroboros, Ouroboros is doing and, you know, stopping them. And there's so many times throughout this game that just, that just don't let you do that. And it's like, hello? You know, like, that's my job. But, but it, it's making you be a bracer. So like in the context of the world, it makes a lot of sense. But when you step out of the game, then it just it's it's just obnoxious to, to deal with. It's it's a very interesting uh, dynamic going on there. 
Uh, why would anyone ever think it's a good idea to take a vacation instead of trying to help Kurt's team uh, find Ouroboros' base? That bugged me. Like, it still bugs me that Kurt's team obviously needed the help. And we're just like, oh, we'll just let them handle it because they're great bracers. And uh, we'll just we'll just go off and, uh, you know, have some fun. The, uh, the circle on the copyright right there, it's, uh, it's not around the C for the copyright. It's like all the way at license. That's, uh, that's very interesting. That's very, very interesting. Um, and then, on top of that, what is Kurt's team even doing looking for Ouroboros' base instead of me? Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Like, I, I, it, the structure of this game didn't quite go in that direction, but I'm so salty that I can't actually be the one to go and 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 look for it. Like that that to me would be a big accomplishment. Be like, oh man, we're searching around. Oh, we just caught on this clue. Oh, we caught on this clue. And oh, hey, look, we put all the clues together and we found Ouroboros' base. Now let's call the homies, and then we'll let them know, and then we'll go infiltrate. You know? It, it's so obnoxious. It's so obnoxious. Uh, you, didn't, uh, you didn't feel the need for a third game after this one, but of course, in typical Trails fashion. But wait, there's more. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I wonder what they're going to do in the third one. I... Uh, I'm going to get around to that one eventually, and uh, th this one, at least so far, I haven't read any of this upcoming stuff, but uh, at least so far, things seem to be pretty capped off. Um, and a lot of the stuff that I did read was that, like, everyone either really loves the third game or really hates the third game uh, in comparison to the to the rest of them. So... We'll, we'll figure that out eventually. Uh, let's see. And then, um, why would you hand me zero field generators to deliver? Uh, give that to the army or to the scrub bracers to deliver. This bugged me too in regards to like the pacing of this game. It. I'm on the Ouroboros task force. And so... Instead of trying to figure out a way to get up to the Ariel or uh, brainstorming with people, you're going to have me walk around the world handing off these little devices so that people can call each other, you know? It's just another example of this game does a really good job of making you be a bracer, but it's so frustrating as a player to just... To, to have to do these mundane things when there's so much more important things to be doing. Oh dear. Uh, and see, thoughts on the story. Uh, this is uh, my segmented section. Uh, approximately nine hours into the game, we've had one scene to see Joshua. Having Joshua be this far removed from the player is a very bold move and probably something I don't like at this point in the game. 24, uh, 25 hours into the game and we've seen Joshua one more time. 26 hours and I got to play Joshua for a, a short segment. 38 hours into the game and we get Joshua back shortly before we got another scene with him. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and lock it in right here. I don't like the way they handled Joshua in this game. Um, I will touch on this later, but I, I still feel like I don't know. Um, <clears throat> I, I don't know whose story we're following right now, but having beat this game, it's, it's definitely both of their stories. And to just, to just have him gone for 50 per, uh, around 50% of this game is so obnoxious. You know, like it's just so obnoxious. Um and then this being my fifth Trails game so far, the formulaic story beats of the story are starting to negatively impact my enjoyment. 
I need the narrative structure to change between chapters, not repeat. I need to be a part of something that isn't. Blindly travel somewhere to help, stumble upon something strange. After investigating, realize uh, it's more than just strange, possibly unnatural. Get lured purposefully to the bad guy mastermind behind the strangeness. Get easily defeated by the mastermind. Don't get killed because plot. Um, this this just happens too much in Trails games where like the first X amount of chapters that are the majority of the game are more or less exactly the same. They they do the same things, they follow the same story structure, and it's it's just annoying, you know? It, you can just sit there and be like, okay. This guy, you know, once we beat him, he's going to beat us, and then he's just going to walk away. And I mean, it, it's happened the first... first. Uh, I have it written down here somewhere. Um, like, uh, the first five chapters or so? It's it's just... I, I need variety, you know? And in this game doesn't... doesn't uh, these games, as a whole... Don't offer that to me. Oh man, go go tell Ryo that right now. <laughs> I guess he he liked not having Joshua around. Uh, it makes his character from uh, the first game seem almost emo or uh, somewhat silly with the decisions uh, that he makes between uh, two games. You went on not liking him as much in one to liking him even less in two. He just loves Joshua as a character. Okay. I mean I. I don't I don't know if I have any like concrete thoughts on Joshua. I I, I don't dislike his character. Um and I, I do feel like there is progression with him. And I, I like the the arcs that that his story goes through. Um I I could probably agree that I'm not maybe the biggest fan of how his character approaches the the things that happened around him, but uh, I, I I would probably say that I I at least like the the framing of his his uh, story. <clears throat> uh, any things you have expressed about not liking how he was handled or or how you feel he was mostly just not as not nearly as good as he could have been somewhat boring or disappointing I mean I I could agree with that I, I I could agree with that um where did I leave off on oh oh yeah this part I can only imagine how much more interested I would be in this game's plot if we spent the first one to two cha uh, chapters tracking down Joshua convincing him to let us help and then using his knowledge and skills to track down Ouroboros and actually interrupt some of their plans forcing them to adapt. I have this issue a lot with the Trails games about how we're never proactive. We can never pick up, uh, pick up a clue that gains us ground. Instead, any information we learn always sets us back because it's impossible to, de to decipher or we're too late to make a difference. And then obviously like the end of the game is the only time where we feel proactive even though we're not and it's the only time we actually make a, a large accomplishment but uh that's just another thing that's really obnoxious about the the trails games as a whole is we're always on the back foot and we never we never get to to act on something and and learn from that something and then gain an advantage from it and uh, I, I, I think the the series needs to evolve to allow that to happen, uh, because there's so many opportunities to do that. And on on top of that, you know, like other characters get to do that. You know, Cassius gets to do that, but the player doesn't. It's it's kind of annoying. Um, but in regards to like changing the narrative structure, I really would have liked to see. Like, it, it's okay if, if Joshua's gone for a couple of chapters. Like, I, I, I get that. Um, but they could have used his character to 
further the the whole the whole uh you know like he was part of Ouroboros and knows a lot about Ouroboros if we, we never really got to utilize any of his knowledge on on any of that which is kind of crazy and and on top of that now that I'm thinking about it a lot of the the sections where he's not in our party basically the first five or six chapters like what what was the point of him not being there you know it, blah uh, let's see. Uh, I still love the plots and machinations of Ouroboros. Uh, quite likely the most intelligent characters in the game. It's also nice to see the villains accomplish their goals in a JRPG, but the way the Trails games accomplish it is frustrating to me as a player. Um, I kind of already touched on this basically, but it, it's just the, the narrative structure of, you know, they're doing something mysterious. We try to go stop them. We obviously have no chance of stopping them, uh, but... They, they leave us alone, and everything just continues to be a mystery. And then at the end of the game, we, we learn uh, about the mystery, and it's unveiled, but there's still more mystery, you know? I, I do wish there was a little bit more, more cohesive learning stuff. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, let me see... What do I got here? Um, the thought of Estelle joining Ouroboros is amazing, and I want to see it happen. In fact, give me a Trails game where I play as an Ouroboros member. Uh, Joshua doesn't count. Um, I think this would be a really cool concept. I think a lot of the Ouroboros members, you know, despite them being evil bad guys, you know, some of them actually are pretty cool people. Um, uh, some of the Ouroboros members that you meet in the Trails of Cold Steel games are not really horrible people. They're just working for an organization that, uh, may or, like, may be doing evil things to accomplish some evil goal. I mean, I still don't even know what Ouroboros is trying to do. Um, but I, I, I I'd be down for an Ouroboros Trails game. You know, give me that. Uh, let's see, and Chapter 6 is when we see the narrative switch up. Uh, which was a really nice change of pace. However, Chapter 7 is more, uh, more or less falls back on old ways. Um, yeah, I, I just, I just want to see a narrative switch up. Uh, for the writing, uh, still as wonderfully written and as obnoxiously verbose as the first game. Many scenes just go on for too long. Uh, I don't think there's ever been a scene in a Trails game where I went, wow, that scene needed to be longer. Um, I think that's pretty self-explanatory. Uh, I think the Trails games would really benefit from cutting down from the required script and instead add optional scenes around the world. For example, uh, I mentioned when we first got Joshua back that I'd go back to the, uh, I would go back to the Bright House. I was expecting a scene right there. It would have been nice for Estelle to tell Joshua that he's home again and reinforce that they will be f together forever. Um, I think there was a lot of missed opportunities uh, for that to happen. And I was kind of disappointed that we we didn't really get any of that. I mean, we got it in like required dialogue, but you could just, you can trim that and then just add these little nice little spots around the world, you know, and kind of get rewarded a little bit more for exploring because this game wants you to explore quite a bit. Uh, for characters, Olivier is still entertaining. Very interesting. He actually caught me off guard when uh, Erebonia showed up at the gates and he was pretending that he never like met us and stuff like that. I was like, dang, is there like a doppelganger thing going on or something? You know, I, it threw me for a loop there. But, you know, he was just uh, playing a role and uh, he did very well. Uh, so good job, uh, Olivier. Uh, let's see, and um, uh, I admit it was nice to learn about our companions' pasts, uh, however, it did feel forced and contrived. Uh, this Ouroboro Enforcer just happened to be an acquaintance of a party member that is required for the chapter yada yada. I wish it was more organic, like I remember some scenes uh, between Estelle and Joshua in the first game. Um, it would have just been really nice if they structured this game 
so that when it was time to time for Sherazard to meet uh, Lou Leo Lou or whatever her name is, the bewitching bell. You know, the other characters get called off on another mission or something like that. Just something a little bit more organic. And then the conversations between them, you know, uh, just flow a little bit better so that when these characters meet, it's, it's, it just meshes, you know, it doesn't feel as forced, I guess. Um, but I mean, it's, it's, it's a small, small nitpick, I, I suppose. Um, let me see. Oh, oh boy. Um, while it has been toned down, uh, and while we get to see some fruits of his intellect, I'm still sick of hearing how amazing Cassius Bright is. Uh, we got one scene where, uh, where he fought Julia, and that was cool, no doubt. But, but it's not what I want to see. In the Trails of Cold, uh, in Trails of Cold Steel 2, towards the end of the game, you get to see a fight between two super-powered people, and it's awesome. This game keeps shying away uh, from this with Cassius, and it's driving me nuts. Um, I, I, I'm two games in now. Um, I don't know what my playtime is right now. Um, probably in the 55, 58 hours. Uh, I spent like 35 hours or so in the first game. I'm almost 100 hours in. To, if not a hundred hours in to the Trails in the Sky games and I've still yet to see Cassius Bright do anything that makes him worthy of being talked about so much it's, it's obnoxious um, for gameplay mechanics and design what gameplay elements stand out uh, in the first Trails of the Sky game we explored Laburl while I like revisiting many of the same areas to see how things have changed, it's only been approximately two months since the, fir since the first game ended. In other words, nothing has changed. Uh, I'm not a fan of revisiting the same content personally. I'd rather visit new areas in the same world, occasionally visiting familiar places. I've quit games in the past uh, doing this because of how dull things get. Uh, specifically... Um, Tales of Zillia 2 was a game that I sat down, and Trails of Cold Steel 2 was a game that I actually sat down as well, but I eventually went back to it. Um, I don't like revisiting uh, areas that I've already visited as part of like the main plot, and it's like central to the game gameplay. Um, if if Every single town in Trails of Cold St uh, Trails in the Sky One you visit in in this game, and the game requires you to go those places. Um, I I'll talk about it uh, a little bit later, but this game doesn't add a whole lot of new places to go, and so there there is a a little nice of familiarity with being able to go back to places that you've seen before but when i play a, a new game i want to want to i want to see new stuff and uh as as far as uh stuff not story related you know as far as like the writing and all the other whatnot i'm talking about like environments uh there's not a lot of new content in this game in that regard and uh i i like to see more progression in that regard in in, in that case uh let me see uh the game is considerably more difficult than the first i'm <laughs> struggling out here um i wrote that uh very very early on uh this game is hard uh at the the start i like it is really really hard i'm playing on like normal difficulty and enemies were hitting me very hard my healing sucked. I uh, I had n hardly any EP to heal. It was just rough times for me. Uh, it got pro uh, as soon as I got my fourth party member, um, things started to get easier, and eventually, you know, the the, the difficulty went went down considerably. But uh, man, that it was uh, I, I was 
very caught off guard by how difficult this game was at first. Uh, full Party of Peeps, Woot. I, 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 I mentioned in the first game that I would, ho I hoped they would give us just like a party of four and stick with it. They, they one up me on that one. They said, we'll give you party of four plus every other character you've met. And, um, uh, uh, with the exception of several other or uh, required people, you can basically swap in whoever you want and play whoever you want. So I was like, okay, that's pretty cool. I I, I like that a lot. It's, ex it's pretty much exactly what my, what I wanted, and more. Um, I really don't like the menu navigation. It's confusing and unclear. It's tough to see what's being selected because there are multiple indicators. It also doesn't change. Uh, selection based on hovering. <clears throat> uh, for example, if I want to swap out Estelle's armor, I go in and I do so. Now, if I back out, it still shows I'm changing out Estelle's armor. If I select a new character, I'm still viewing Estelle. This would easily be fixed by changing the character you're viewing when you actually hover over them. Uh, this is a problem in the first game as well. Um, I have a lot of issues. I run into a lot of issues with the menus because of just how it functions and it would be a little little nicer if they just clean that up a little bit. Uh, let me see. Uh, it's funny the excuses the game gives you in order uh, to keep your party of four people. Uh, we'll stand out if we have too many people or uh, we'll need to keep people rested in case you swap people out. Or the rest of us uh, will help with, with repairs. Uh, I think I think the game forgot that we're fighting the most powerful people we've ever seen and need all the help we can get. Uh, this is just a, just just like a, a funny observation that s some some games uh, forget how they're doing things and it, it becomes a little gamey how how things are approached in order to meet certain mechanical uh, restrictions. Uh, monster chests have been drastically reduced, which I appreciate. Uh, there were so many monster chests in the first Trails in the Sky game, and uh, I, I, would, I would hazard a guess that there are about, uh, I, I don't know, I mean, there are so many more treasure chests in this game, I feel, and there are so few monster chests. I, I would guess maybe 25 monster chests uh, I've encountered in the entire game, just a, a off the dome guess. Whereas in the first game, there's probably like 75. <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it's crazy. Uh, so I appreciate that a lot. Uh, on my difficulty level, uh, most chests feel unexciting. It appears uh, it appears there are two types of chests, items and equipment. Uh, while I appreciate the items I get, uh, it would be nice to get money from chests here and there. Uh, more quartz rewards would be cool too. The ratio of item to equipment chests is pretty drastic. Um, there are not a lot of equipment chests in this game. Um, not, not a lot at all. It's like... Um, I don't remember what game it was that I, but there, there's there's some sort of excitement to opening up a treasure chest and when you just get consumable items that excitement doesn't really uh, hold I suppose and when the majority of your treasure chests are consumable items you then start considering do I really need to open up this treasure chest or can I move on? Now, uh, that was mostly a consideration for me because the difficulty level I was was on, I wasn't using very many items. Plus, uh, I would inspect every chest for you know the little bits of dialogue that they offer. Um, but uh, basically, in a nutshell, all you gotta do is open up the equipment chests, which are distinctively different looking than item chests, and you'll probably be good, at least on my difficulty level. Uh, let me see. Uh, I'm not a fan of the game giving not only one new character at the end of the game, but three. 
Especially when uh, they aren't going to fight seriously on my team. I'm looking at you, Mueller. Uh, yeah, this was a very curious decision. To give Mueller and Julia... Uh, at, or have them be usable characters at the end. I, I like getting more characters, but... Um, when, when games usually do that, it, it feels like you have a couple of options. They're either going to be very overpowered, and you should use them, and I, I bet at the very least Mueller was, or they're very underpowered because they didn't go through the entire game that you did with your other party members. And uh, I'm, I'm definitely happy that I didn't choose Mueller or Julia for the final party, but I, I wish I wish we got to use them a lot earlier to see what they're capable of and and see if they're worth using and whatnot and actually um, you know meld them into the group if you're going to because it's just it's just kind of out of the blue at that point. Uh, for combat, uh, not really a fan of chain attacks. The concept is very cool, but for their cost, the turn order displacement and AOE range, it's disappointing. Um, I, I, I've seen how they iterate on, on this, and so I, I like this as an experimentation, um, and I like how they build upon it in uh, Trails of Cold Steel, uh, but specifically for for this game, uh, I. I wasn't that much of a fan of it. Uh, is Tita really as bad as I think she is? <laughs> Someone let me know. <laughs> she has no HP and no damage. Uh, yeah. Uh, someone someone in chat or in the comments, let me know if Tita is actually a good character because she seems pretty awful. Uh, for dungeons, at, uh, at 35 hours in, I can only recall one brand new dungeon. Every other location has been a place we visited in the first game. Uh, some some of the or the the new ones that we visited were the Dragon's Lair in uh, Nepal Valley, Ouroboros's Lake Base, the Glorious, the four Tetra Cyclic Towers when activated, and Liberarch. Um, those are the only. I mean, and Liberarch has a like a couple of dungeons, but um, those are the only dungeons in this game. And when you consider the scope of this game, that's that's a lot of uh, reused content. Uh, which is is great for for uh, development costs, but not so much for my my tastes and whatnot. Uh, Cardinal sins, uh, forcing the player to use certain party members. This got kind of annoying in some places, especially when I had to use Tita. Um, I I I like having the freedom of choosing the party that I want to. Uh, this game was uh, quite fortunate that I wanted to use Joshua regardless. But uh, there were times where I had to use Sherazard or Tita or Zinn, and you know, I, I just I just like having freedom, and uh, you know, game doesn't give me that. Um, although although Joshua's probably like the main squad, so like he's he's more of a it's it's more of like a two required and then two optional, and I didn't always get two optional. Uh, backup party earns less experience. I. I didn't actually physically test this, but it was fairly obvious when we're at the end of the game and, uh, what's her name? I already forgot her name. The princess, Chloe. Uh, Chloe did not have any levels past, like, level 50. So, um, it, it would have helped a lot if she did have those levels, because then I could have seen if she actually gets more than two crafts and is actually good, because I would have, I really would have liked to use her instead of Olivier, but, oh well. Let's see, for miscellaneous, uh, for music, I'm still pleased with the music. Um, I think they remixed the main theme a little too much. There's, <laughs> there's a lot of the main theme in this game. Uh, but I do like the main theme, so uh, while it is a little too ubiquitous in this game, uh, it's still enjoyable for me to hear. Um, for graphics, I still like the art style. Replay value. Uh, much like the first game, I don't think there's any any benefit in replaying this game in regards to uh, experiencing a new 
or basically getting a new experience from the story. Uh, obviously, there's still a little bit more here to go, but I don't think... I don't think anything in the story will change or or anything like that. I don't think there is, like, uh, I guess I won't say that, but anyways, I, I, I don't see the replay value as of yet. I think you can just play it once and you can be satisfied with everything you got. Um, in my last section, it's a developer is watching. Um... I think as a whole, you could probably go to any one of my Trails Games Thoughts videos and see a fairly consistent way of how I'm approaching these games and what I would like to see going from them. And I think the number one thing is I would just like a, a story structure that's a little bit more unique from a chapter to chapter basis. And maybe, maybe even treating the story, um, I, I, I don't want to say like seriously, but I, I want, I, I want to see the characters actually accomplish interesting goals and, and, and feel like they're, they're making headway on on their tasks. Um, I, I mentioned earlier that we uh, we're rarely ever proactive. And so I'd, I'd like to be proactive. I'd, I'd like to see progression and I'd actually like to foil some of the, the bad guys plans every now and then, you know, um, I like to feel like the things that I'm accomplishing actually matter. Uh, and I don't always get that in trails games. Um, so I, I'd like to see that progression. I have no idea where the third Trails game is going to go, but, um, I'm, I'm, I, I was quite pleased with this game and the previous one. So it stands reason that I will play the third one and figure out, uh, what else there is to tell. So... Uh, that's going to wrap it up for my thoughts on Trails in the Sky SC. And now I'm going to get to reading this stuff. And I don't know if I'm going to add this stuff at the end of my thoughts or not. So I might cut here. Okay. Uh, Karen, I'm back. Uh, here, this is from Loe. You did it wrong. I think you're supposed to... Stick it in that way. Uh, it's so good to see that smile, Joshua. Uh, his back is his, his face, too. Uh, I bet Loe likes it, too. Yeah. Loe and Karen were as close uh, as I've ever known two people to be. They wanted to be together forever, I think. And now they are. Well. Come on, man. Yeah. Uh, hey, can I say hi to Karen, too? Of course. Um, hi, Karen. Nice to meet you. I'm Estelle. Estelle Bright. I'm, well, for a little while, uh, I was sort of trying to be his replacement sister without knowing it, but I couldn't really replace you. I guess I'm now, um, his girlfriend. You guess? That's terrible. <clears throat> Sorry. Uh, still not used to it. It's kind of, you know, embarrassing. Oh, for the... Uh, it's still so very you, Estelle. Uh, so very what? Do I detect an entendre, Busta? <laughs> uh, you know, when nobody else is around, uh, you can be—you uh, can sure be... Uh, sorry, I was in the middle of saying hello, wasn't I? So, I wanted to say hello and come with Joshua to see his original home. I'm looking forward... I'm looking forward to what's to come for the two of us. Thank you, Estelle. I'm sure Karen is very happy. I hope so. Uh, I know I'm still sort of a dunce and not the most reliable person ever. I have to admit, I'm a bit worried uh, what I'd do if she ever thought you're not good enough to be Joshua's girlfriend, Estelle Bright. Shoo. 
Uh, I think you're overthinking it a bit. If anything, I think Karen uh, would have loved you. You two, you two would have been a nice contrast in terms of personality. You think so? And there goes my entendre radar again, mister. So you're saying I'm not as uh, strong deep down or as calm and quiet as your sister, right? No, <laughs> no. Uh, I really do think you're strong deep down, actually. Calm and quiet, well, not exactly like Karen, no. But I'm not complaining. Always bright, optimistic, and shining like the sun. That's the girl I fell in love with. Ah. What was that? You know how to go for the jugular with the embarrassment, you know. Sorry, did I, uh, did you not like it? Of course I liked it. That is not the issue here. I don't quite get the problem, I guess. Okay, we've said our hellos, but let's be off. I can see Karen rolling, rolling her eyes at us from the cloud tops. Oh yeah, I guess. What is it? Are you really sure about this? You really want to leave the borough and follow me? Oh. My journey to atone for the sins I've committed in the society's name is my problem. Uh, so is my desire to strengthen myself and live up to Loy. I'm still not sure if I want to wrap you, uh, wrap you up in all this. Oh, for the love of... You always miss the important part. Ragnard said it, didn't he? This whole mess was just the beginning. Besides, I seriously doubt the society's plans are all played out. And when those snakes strike from the grass again, I want to be even stronger than Dad. You're not the only one who has someone to live up to. Stronger than Cassius, that's a tall order. Well, go big or go home, right? Plus, I made that promise to Loe, and I really want to see more places beyond the burrow. I'd also like to try and find Ren, if, if we can. And... Stell? And come on, Joshua, do I really need a reason to be with you? Oh. Of course not. Or no, of course not. You're all the reason you need, all by yourself. Exactly. See, Joshua, what would you do if I wasn't around to point things out to you? You're right, I'd be doomed. And so the two went off on their journey. Oh, let's go, Estelle. I have no idea where uh, this path will lead us, but I'm sure something awaits us at the end. Yeah, one step at a time, we'll walk it together to the end. Yeah, that, that really is kind of a, a definitive end right there. I am definitely very curious how they're going to to walk into the third. Alright, save. I didn't do this last time. Alright. Quite, I mean, 59 minutes. That's quite a bit of time. Quite a bit of time. Okay, well, that's it for Trails in the Sky, so I'm getting out of here. I got a, uh, I got someone else's thought videos to watch. Um, speaking of which, is anybody else streaming right now? Uh, no one else is streaming right now, so uh, I'm gonna head on out. Uh, thanks for watching, appreciate it. I got some videos to upload, got some stuff. Um, I imagine I'll be back tomorrow at. 8.30 a.m. Pacific to play something, something. Uh, but, uh, we'll see. I, we'll, we'll see. Anyways, thanks for watching. Appreciate it. See ya the next time I see ya. Peace.